story, kind of a silly story, about some guy who was named Marbury, who was promised a job by Madison, who was Secretary of State at the time, and then Madison, once he got elected, said, sorry, I'm not going to give it to you, broke his promise. And for some reason, Marbury thought he could sue him for it. And because of a Judiciary Act um, that was passed by Congress, he realized he could take it straight to the Supreme Court. I don't want to waste time with lower courts. Supreme Court's number one, so let's just go right to them because they're the number one, the highest law of the land, the highest court of the land. Um, and the Supreme Court looked at his case and said, you, sir, are silly. You can't sue someone because they broke a promise. Um, but we're going to see anyways because of this Judiciary Act. They decided after seeing the case that the Judiciary Act should be trash canned because the Constitution says that you can't go straight to the Supreme Court. You have to start at a lower court before you can bring it to the Supreme Court. Um, you, and as a result, that act was thrown out. This established a precedent that the Supreme Court could overturn a law. They had seen cases before where they clarified law, but this is the first time they outright threw out a law because even though Congress passed it, they passed it as an act, not as an amendment. And only amendment can change the actual Constitution. Anything else that goes against the Constitution cannot be law. And this is the precedent that the Supreme Court said that we will throw out your laws if they're not, if they go against the Constitution. And that power is called judicial review. That's what we see in a number of cases. Um, now, Miranda versus Arizona, they didn't throw out a law, but they end up th throwing out a court's decision. Um, Ernesto Miranda in 1966 was arrested and charged with rape. Um, and he was, he was sentenced to, to jail for it because they had got a confession out of him. Well, Miranda sued because he said that the confession was illegally gained. That means that they just forced it out of him and that he didn't know of his rights and he was just scared and he was just going to tell them anything just to get out of the situation and that that confession should not be accepted. Um, and this went to the Supreme Court, and they based uh, their decision upon hearing it off of three amendments. The Fifth Amendment, which, is, uh, which protects the rights of the accused. The Sixth Amendment, which means everyone has the right to a fair trial. And the Fourteenth Amendment, which is everyone deserves due process and equal protection under the law. All of this combined said that Ernesto Miranda should not have been arrested and should not, and his confession cannot be accepted because he was not aware of his rights. After this decision, all police officers, when they arrest someone, they have to read someone their rights. You know that you have the right to remain silent. You have the right to a lawyer. Anything you say can be used against you. If you don't say that, those are your rights. Those are your Miranda rights. If, you, if a police officer doesn't say that, you anything you say can't be used against you and the whole court case if you were a trial will just be thrown out um, he argued because he argued that he was not informed of his rights and if he doesn't know about his rights that's the same thing as not having them to begin with so based on the 5th 6th and 14th amendment they decided that oh well his rights uh, he if he doesn't know them that's the same as not having them so police officers have to inform you of your rights when they arrest you. Regents of the University of California versus Backey, 1978. This court case has to do with the extremely controversial topic of affirmative action. Affirmative action is the term used to, um, it's an effort to counteract, I mean, to try to reverse the effects of past racial discrimination and gender discrimination um, because in the past white males were so heavily favored by businesses and universities. Um, it's not necessarily um, fighting current racism, it's not necessarily punishing people for being racist so much as just trying to help end the long-term effects, try to fight the long-term effects of past racism. Um, so, in this, so as a result of this, a lot of um, Colleges had to make sure, again, this is before the Supreme Court got involved, 
affirmative action laws were passed forcing colleges and some businesses to make sure they're hiring a certain amount of minorities, a certain percentage, or a certain number, whatever. And um, in 1978, a man named Alan Backey, he applied to UC Davis and he was rejected for what he felt was because he was too white and too old. Um, and so he sued. He said, no, that's reverse discrimination. The law can't possibly be meaning to hurt anybody. It's supposed to help one group, but if it's hurting my group, then that's not fair. That's discrimination. So it went up to the, all the way up to the Supreme Court. Um, lower courts actually um, supported Backey and forced, him let, let, forced uh, UC Davis to accept him and saying that you cannot... Um, reject someone just for being white um, and then so the UC system didn't like that so they took Backey to the Supreme Court and that's why in this case the University of California is the plaintiff because while it started with Backey by the time it got to the Supreme Court the University of California was the one over trying to trying to overturn a previous appeal and the Supreme Court decision was that Affirmative action is okay to have. You can use race as a factor uh, when deciding who to admit to your school or not, but it can't be the only factor. And that's the problem they had with the Backey case was that uh, Backey was being rejected for just for being white and no other factors were, were pulled into play. And they said, you can't do that. It can be a factor. Affirmative action is okay, but it can't just be all about race. You have to look at other things too to make sure people who deserve to be in school can get into school. Um, Phillips versus Martin Marietta Corporation, 1971. Um, a, a corporation told Ida Phillips that she um, could not, well, they would not hire her because she was a mother and they felt like, well, she, because she's a mother, she's gonna, her energy and her focus is gonna be on the kids and she won't be a very good employee, so we're not gonna hire you. Um, this policy was not fair because it affected women, but not men. And the, again, the policy was in place because they felt that women who are, have children just aren't gonna be able to focus on their work, not as well as a man would. Even if the man has kids, doesn't matter. The men are assumed to be able to control themselves and the women will be just focused on the children even when they're at work. That was their opinion and that's why they rejected her. Um, so that's what made it discriminatory because it only affected women and not men even, if they, even though they have kids too. And so the court decided that if you're not going to hire a mom who, doesn't have, who has kids, then you need to have the same policy for men and not hire them all or not hire men either if they don't have kids. One policy for all. You can't have one policy for women and one policy for men. You have one hiring policy, one set of rules for all people of all gender, and you can't have, pick and choose this rule for this type of person and this rule for that person. No double standards at work is the, it was a judgment.